Hello and thank you for worshipping with us at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. Thank you for spending a part of your day with us. My name is Reverend Dr. Neil and I'm the Senior Minister here at Cathedral of Hope. In just a few minutes, we're going to get our worship started. Our fabulous musicians are going to offer a worship set with uplifting music, praise and prayer and an opportunity for you to share your gifts for the benefit of our church. We'll hear a word of hope that is sure to leave you inspired and we'll close out with more music that will carry you into the rest of the week. Now is a great time to check in. Just follow the link in the comments to register your attendance and offer any prayer requests and celebrations you'd like us to attend to over this week. There are so many ways to stay connected to Cathedral of Hope throughout the week. And in the description of this video, we are offering links to our small groups, our weekly email and our Facebook CFAM. Make sure you check those out. Finally, we post content throughout the week on Facebook and YouTube. So please make sure you hit the subscribe and follow buttons. And if you like this worship service, please give it a thumbs up and hit share to invite your friends to worship with you. With all of that said, worship is going to begin in just a minute. So find your seats and we'll get started shortly. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being moved. And God, we believe, because yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. Giants are still.
It's exciting for me to welcome you into our Wednesday night Pulse Worship Experience, our midweek pick-me-up at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. My name is Reverend Aaron Wyma. I am one of the associate ministers at this amazing and beautiful and life-giving church, and we are so glad that you are worshiping with us whenever you are. But if you're here live with us um, in the premiere, either on YouTube or Facebook, we hope that you are connecting, um, commenting, letting us know that you are here. It is my great honor and joy to welcome you, as I said. Um, we spend this time on Wednesday nights to not only worship in a different way than on Sundays, but also um, really lean into some life-giving lessons, not only from ancient scripture, but from ancient wisdom. Tonight we are ending our sermon series on the Four Agreements, which is a book of ancient wisdom that we are applying to our lives today. And as you know, there's actually a new fifth agreement, and that's what our own senior minister, Reverend Neal, is preaching on tonight. The fifth agreement, how we live in a world um, full of lots of information coming at us, and how we learn to be a little bit skeptical and lean into really listening for understanding. And so my prayer and my hope is that you will find some wisdom tonight. As you know, if you follow me on social media, um, I was on vacation last week, so I missed um, you all so much, even in this format, missed you so much. Um, but I was with my family, not only my dad and stepmom, but I stayed with um, my best friend Jody, her husband, and my nieces um, who are growing up so fast. And as you know, those are not my family by blood. Those are my family by choice. And not only did I learn, first of all, how difficult it is to navigate the schedule of three young children who are all in school online at the same time while their parents got a little time away. But I also was reminded that all of the people that I visited um, over my time in California, my friends, my family, my chosen family, are all from my church life, are all from not only ministry over the years, but the churches that were impactful of me and my life, particularly in college and young adult life. And how often we get our chosen family from our church. We get our sense of belonging. We get our sense of connection. We get our sense of um, being accountable and holding others accountable. The people we can lean on and count on, those are the people we find most often in our faith community, our spiritual friends, our spiritual mentors. Um, those we live alongside loving and learning about the God of love. And so we here at Cathedral of Hope, uh, we hope that you are connecting in profound ways to this community, even in distance, right? We have our CFAM on Facebook, check it out. There is um, new content that happens. Usually on Thursday, there's going to be Coffee with Clergy where we'll talk a little bit more about the sermon topic. Um, we also have, of course, small groups and classes and social groups. Um, I hope that you are connected in profound ways um, and it helps you to give more fully into the life of the church. We know that we're living in a pandemic, but I want to encourage you and remind you that through online worship and through the monthly times where you can come by and get communion at the end of the month, the last Sundays of the month, we have been having some of the best pack the pantries. In fact, this last Sunday, those of you who donated to those in our community who struggle with um, food insecurity and housing insecurity, we got some of the best donations we've ever had. We leaned into not only that, but we had our best school drive ever this year where we we help kids who have families with AIDS. We help local community kids who maybe couldn't afford the supplies for school.
school. You have done that. You have not only interpersonally been impacted by this church, we hope, but you are impacting the world with all that you give and all that you do and all the ways that you serve. And so my hope is that you will continue to be generous. We remind ourselves to give generously because we love and serve a God who is generous. And so my hope and prayer is that you are living into the life of this church fully by giving the gifts that you have. You can mail in a check, you can text to give, you can give online. We hope that even you're an auto giver, what we call a sustaining disciple, someone who gives into the life of the church regularly. There are many ways to give, and we hope that you will live more fully into the life of this church, knowing that God loves you so much. God sees you, we see you, and we are excited that you're with us. Let us pray as we continue in worship. God of goodness and grace and glory, we come before you, humbled by the ways in which you show up and touch our lives, even in the midst of being distanced from one another. God, you work and you're your spirit works in profound and beautiful ways to challenge and change us, God. Tonight, help us to hear the word that you have for us. Help us to experience your grace, experience the truth of who you are in our lives. May we be changed and ever more made into the likeness of the Christ that we serve. May it be so. Amen. Let's continue in our pulse worship. Sings my soul, my 
Friends, it's always uh, a wonderful opportunity for me to be able to address you and the sermon for Pulse on Wednesday nights. And I'm grateful to all of the other preachers who also bring a word, especially in this sermon series. So as we bring this sermon series to an end this night with a brand new series starting next week, I invite you to open your heart, your mind, your body, and all that you experience in the spiritual realm that meets us now here on this earth as we open ourselves to what God might be saying to us this night. Let us pray together. Almighty, loving and living God, thank you for this opportunity to gather and to be in worship together. Thank you for the music that brings and welcomes our spirit and our soul and opens us to the mystery and the awe of God's Holy Spirit. Thank you that you have opened us this night and with those open hearts and open minds, God, we now come before you and invite your spirit to open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts and our bodies to the God who is with us. And so with that God and with openness, we welcome you. And now God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this night. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, we do bring to a conclusion a series of sermons that we've been preaching on Wednesday nights on the Four Agreements. Uh, the Four Agreements that was written uh, a while ago uh, to talk about the ways in which people who have a spiritual bent, uh, people who have good intent in their lives, might be able to embrace some values uh, that in some ways were attached to religion or to Christianity, but in many ways were detached. They were a secular response. Uh, to some ways in which the spiritual realm has failed many of us. And in this book by Don Miguel Ruiz, he writes about those four agreements that perhaps people of good intent and people of goodwill and, of course, people who follow Jesus might be able to incorporate into their lives and make a better way to have some agreements with yourself that might ultimately reflect out into the world and that others might come into those agreements as well. And so over these last four weeks, we've heard those four agreements preached about using primarily uh, in tandem with readings from the book of Proverbs. And so we've heard, be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Always do your best. And as Reverend Andre would say, and God will do the rest. And then, of course, Reverend Michael preached on don't make assumptions. They may sound easy and they may sound really practical, but in their application in our lives as disciples of Jesus, these, these four agreements are not always easy to maintain. They're not always easy to live. But if we do our best and if we don't make assumptions and if we try not to take anything personally and we're always impeccable with our word, if we could incorporate those four agreements into our lives, not only would our lives perhaps be better, but the lives of those around us who are sometimes model themselves after the examples of who we are. That's what Jesus was teaching, modeling the others after the way he lived. If we could live our lives modeled after these values and modeled by us and through us to others, perhaps our world would be a better place. Perhaps our lives would be better because the truth is that so many ways we do take ourselves far too personally. We do make assumptions in our lives. We don't always do our best and sometimes we're not impeccable with our word. We, we certainly know that to be true in our world today as we listen to the lives of others and sometimes the lies that come from people's mouths and the ways in which sometimes people don't live into their best, don't live into their fullest, don't live into who they are authentically in this world. Now, you would think that those four agreements were enough, but uh, in our modern world, we discovered that there was another agreement that Don Miguel Ruiz wanted to write about, and that was what we now call the fifth agreement. I'm looking forward to perhaps the sixth and seventh agreement that he'll write later on. But Don Miguel wrote this uh, fifth agreement because he realized that we live in a different kind of world. And in the fifth agreement, he writes this, Be skeptical but learn to listen. Be skeptical, but learn to listen. 
We live in a world of fake news. We live in a world that we have had to be skeptical about everything that is said to us and everything that is done to us. Not everybody is impeccable with their word. Not everyone tells the truth all the time. Not everyone lives in the ways that perhaps we would want ourselves to live. Perhaps we don't live always to our fullest and our best. And so in this fifth agreement, he writes, be skeptical but learn to listen because we have to have that spiritual antenna that helps us to understand what is truth and what is not truth. Scripture writes over and over again to run from evil and to embrace that which is good. Perhaps that's what this fifth agreement is really all about, is about finding a level of skeptability in our lives that won't always trust everything that everyone says. And if you're an avid reader of Facebook or of any other social media, you know that we have to keep a skeptical eye on anything and everything that is being said. Now, being skeptical can lead us in two different directions. It can lead us in the direction of then not trusting anything and not listening to anything because we think that we have the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth and that we have the best judgment of what is being told. It means that we can sometimes shut ourselves down to the opinions of others. But a healthy skeptability perhaps learns us, as Don Miguel Ruiz would say, Perhaps a curiosity, a curiosity about our skepticality is about how we listen, how we might listen to the opinions of others, how we might listen and find the truth somewhere between the lines. I've often discovered that whenever a story is being told that you have to understand that there is at least two sides to any story. <laughs> Some would say there are three or four sides to a story, but there are at least two sides to every story. And that there is something about being curious, something about being skeptical, something about our learned experiences of life that have helped us to be better learners and not just always talkers, not just always the people who have the opinion or believe that we have the truth and always the ones who believe that our way must be the right way. But perhaps in our being skeptical of life, being skeptical of people's opinions, being skeptical of what truth is and where truth lies. The lesson for us is to be curious and to learn to listen. You know, recently in a staff meeting, uh, we uh, talked about how we can have a healthy curiosity, asking questions, trying to ensure that we are hearing and understanding what we sometimes assume is being said. There's there's that other agreement in our lives about making assumptions. And that perhaps a healthy skepticism is also a healthy curiosity. Asking for clarifying questions, asking what it is. Certainly that's what we do with our scriptures. We are curious about what Jesus means when he says certain things and we level ourselves and give ourselves permission to ask questions. What did Jesus mean? What is the reality of the culture in which he found himself? And today in our world, we too must have the agreement with ourselves that we must be skeptical, perhaps sometimes skeptical of the opinions we have and to be curious about where people live and how people live, and how people got to the decisions that they've made about their lives. Many of us come from a place of privilege, and sometimes our ability to move and be in the world is based in that privilege. And we're not often curious about the ways other people have arrived at the places that they find themselves. Being skeptical is a healthy example of living more fully into the reality of those agreements that we can have with ourselves and with others, to ask the clarifying questions. Even the disciples would say to Jesus, what did you mean by that? Help us to understand in the parables of Jesus, help us to understand how the disciples were also skeptical of the way Jesus was. He was, they were skeptical because in Jesus' time, there were many who were claiming to be Messiah, and their curiosity had them to lead them to find out whether this Jesus was really the one that they were looking for, was really the Messiah. Learning to listen, learning to be skeptical. Our reading today came from the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 15, and it says this, the inexperienced one believes anything but the sensible one watches their steps. 
<laughs> Hear that again. The inexperienced one believes anything, but the sensible one watches their steps. Now, if you're anything like me, life experience has taught us that you can't always believe everything that anyone is telling you. And sometimes in that inexperience of wanting to believe, of, of wanting to believe the best of every single human being, about wanting to read and know the facts of life, that sometimes you have learned, as I have learned, that that isn't always the way people live. Scripture reminds us that in our experience of life, we sometimes have to be skeptical and always to be sensible about watching our steps about watching our lives, about watching our truth. It's not what comes from the mouth that defiles us, it's what lives inside us. And today, as we bring this sermon series to an end, we're invited to live by these five wonderful agreements with ourselves. And living in those agreements with ourselves and by living them out, others see them and perhaps might take on some of the things that we are living by. So I want to close this sermon series this night by just reminding us again of the five agreements and look out for the sixth and seventh. I'm sure they're coming. And to think about for yourself how we might incorporate them into our own lives based in our Scripture, in our holy, sacred text, the book of Proverbs that has so many wonderful short phrases that help us to live into the ways of God and how we might make them real for ourselves. We can't be responsible for others, but we can be responsible for the ways in which we live, to let our yes be yes and our no be no, to be truthful with all that we do and with all that we say, and to know that not everyone Yes, the inexperienced one believes anything, but the sensible one watches their steps. So hear these five agreements one more time. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. And finally, Don Miguel Ruiz would say, be skeptical, be curious but learn to listen. In the coming weeks, we're going to have to do that a lot, to learn to listen, to be skeptical, and to be curious. It was the way with Jesus. It was the way with the disciples, and it should be the way that we live too. So may we live more fully this day, into all that God makes possible for us in our humanity so that we might live the road less traveled by being skeptical and learning to listen. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope. Pulse worship. Amen.
Wednesday is such a wonderful time to come together and have our midweek pick-me-up and I sincerely hope that you have found something today that not only picks you up but will also propel you into the rest of the week. So as we bring this worship service to the end and indeed this sermon series, I particularly pray that we might be able to apply not just our spiritual principles but also the ways in which the secular world can speak to us, to be impeccable with your word to don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, always do your best. And tonight, be skeptical, but always learn to listen. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, and I sincerely look forward to seeing you on Sunday and next Wednesday when we begin a brand new sermon series. God bless you. Amen.